Hello students, we are going to discuss Ilova Secondary Science 2021 paper. First question is about parallel circuits. Uh, they have given which statement is correct. So A is talking about current flowing and B is also uh, some current flowing and C they are talking about voltage across bulb 1 is bigger than voltage across bulb 2. But we know the voltage across both bulb is the same. So the correct answer is D. Next question, the chemical formula for one molecule of carbon dioxide is CO2. How many atoms are in one molecule of carbon dioxide? So if one carbon is just one, O2 will represent two. Because of that, the total number of atoms will be three. Our answer is C. Next question. Selective breeding can be used to develop particular characteristics in both animals and plants. So the selective uh, breeding procedure we need to know. So you can see that they have given uh, four steps. So first of all, select the animals with the desired feature. Then we need to breed them together. After that, we take the offsprings. We select the offsprings which has the desired feature. After that, we need to repeat that for many generations until we, we find out the offsprings with the desired feature. So first of all, then it should be three, then one, four, and two. So our answer will be the D. Next question. The diagram shows the position of some elements in periodic table. Calcium is a metal with chemical symbol Ca. The position of calcium is shown on the diagram have given it in the periodic table, which other metals in is in the same group of the periodic table as calcium. So that means you need to know what is a group. So remember, these columns are called groups. It's a group. And if you have these type of rows, we call these are the period. This is one period. Let's look at uh, what is there in this uh, along with calcium. We have Mg. Mg represents magnesium. So our answer is B. Next one. Which best describes an artery? We know arteries are the blood vessels which are going away from the heart. And also they have a thick muscular wall to carry the oxygenated blood under high pressure. So if you can remember that point, you can see our answer is B, of course. And in the same point, I'll explain about the veins. Veins are having thin walls and also it doesn't have blood going with much pressure. So pressure is very low with compared to arteries. And if you can remember capillaries, capillaries are having only one cell thick layer, thick wall so that the diffusion can happen faster or more efficiently. Next question. The diagram shows a typical animal cell. Complete the two labels using words from the books. So you can see they have given uh, six names. We need to put the correct name here. Even though without this uh, word set, I think you can remember these ones. This is the cell membrane. And here we one. Substances can be described as elements, mixtures, or compounds. These can be represented by diagrams of the particles they contain. Now, in this diagram, you can see they have given different types of uh, circles to represent the elements. And uh, yeah, same to the element atoms. So you can see there are three different types. One is totally black and the other one is white. The other one is a little bit gray color. And in the first diagram, you can only see all of these uh, particles are separate, uh, I mean, well separated, and also there are uh, black color circles and uh, white color circles. So that means they are two different types of elements. So we can call that's a mixture, but it's not a mixture of uh, compounds. It's a definitely a mixture of two different elements. Pattern one. You can see that there are those black color circles separately and also uh, 
there are compounds. This white color circle and the gray color circle is attached to each other. Because of that, that's a mixture containing elements and compounds. Third one you can see that's only containing compounds because the gray color and white color circles are combined and all the molecules are like that. So it's a single compound. When you are marking, please make sure you use a ruler and mark these ones. Next question. When sodium reacts with water, sodium hydroxide solution and a gas are produced. Give the names of the gas produced in this reaction. In this reaction, the gas produced is hydrogen. Remember, when metals react with water, uh, especially these most reactive ones, it gives out its hydroxide and hydrogen. Sodium hydroxide solution is an alkali. What is the likely pH value of sodium hydroxide solution? So remember that this sodium hydroxide is alkaline. Alkalines are having pH above 7. So if you have written any value in between 8 to 14, you would get it correct. But remember, sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali. It's an alkali. So it's better if you can write the value like 12, 13, or 14. So mostly preferable, a higher value like that. Next question, the reaction between sodium and water is exothermic. And state what is meant by exothermic reaction. So exothermic means uh, it's exiting energy. That's why I have asked you to remember. It's giving out energy. So we'll note down an exothermic reaction. Gives out thermal energy. Next question the diagram will show us a light ray hitting the surface of the mirror. Now, in this uh, process, is called reflection. Hope you can remember. In the reflection, what happens is there will be this incident ray coming and bouncing onto the mirror surface. After that, it will get reflected. So this reflection happens in a specific angle. First of all, you need to draw the normal line for this diagram. So the draw normal line will be added at the point where the light ray is hitting on the mirror. I will try to draw like this. After that, now when you're drawing, make sure that you use a ruler and draw this so that you'll have a straight line and also make sure you take a protractor and measure these angles. So when you measure this value, it uh, I have measured it so that I know this value is 55 degrees. I can't show exactly uh, how to use the protractor and measure it here, but I have uh, measured it on a printed paper. So it's uh, 55. So after taking that reading, what you need to do is keep the protractor and measure another 55 degrees. I'll assume it to be here and draw the reflected ray starting from this point towards that side. So the correct drawing will have 55 degrees marked again and like this. So remember, I'll uh, note down a few more things. If you have drawn uh, the normal line correctly uh, that you are getting one mark and also if you have drawn the reflected ray correctly you are getting one mark so we will mark these things now this is the reflected ray and also we will mark this is angle of reflection This is called the normal. Let's move to the next question. Tenth question. The table contains information about the structure of different microorganisms. Complete the table by adding a tick or cross 
to show the surface, so show the structure of a typical virus. Okay, um, they have given already all the details about bacteria and fungi. You only have to include about the virus. So viruses are not having any cell wall, and also they don't have any mitochondria. They don't have a nucleus even. So no, no, and no. Next question. Give one reason why a virus may not be classed as a living organism. Oh, that's something uh, very commonly that we have answered. We can say they do not have all seven characteristics of living thing. Or oh, they do not show simply. Or we can simply say that uh, they can't reproduce themselves. They have to go into a host cell in order to start reproducing. So those things you can include if you would like. Question, what are the units of electrical resistance? Electrical resistance is measured in the unit called ohms. This is the symbol. Great letter. Next one. Each cell in the diagram has a voltage of 1.5 volt. The current flowing in the circuit, uh, flowing in the circuit is 1.5 amperes. Then uh, calculate the value of the resistance of the bulb. Use the equation. Now, in this circuit, you can see there are three batteries given. Because it's containing three batteries, the total voltage will be 3 into 1.5, which is 4.5 volt. Then uh, the current is 1.5 amperes, we already know. Now let's get down here and do the calculation. Since we need to find out the resistance, we'll have to do a little bit of a rearrange so that we will write down uh, the original equation is V equals IR. Once we rearrange, that's me that means we have to make R the subject. So both sides we can divide by I. So I can, uh, okay, I'll show that step also, divide by I. So the next step I can write is R equals V over I. Once I substitute, it will become 4.5 divided by 1.5, which will give me the answer 3 ohms. I'll write it down here. Next question. Twelfth one. In animals, the surface area to volume ratio is important in maintaining body temperature. The diagram shows the body of a guinea pig being replaced as a cube. The surface area and the volume of the cube are the same as those of the guinea pig. What is the surface area to volume ratio of the guinea pig? So we'll quickly find out the surface area and volume ratio. How to find out the surface area of a cube? That is something you need to uh, revise quickly. Surface area, uh, to find out that, you have to find out the uh, the surface area of one face. One face or one side, I will say, into six. So here it is 12 centimeters, 12 centimeters into 12 centimeters into six. Answer will be, yeah, so can to do the calculation, 12 into 12 into six. We have 864. Centimeters. Then we need to find out the volume. Volume can be found out by multiplying length into width into height. So that will be 12 into 12 into 12, which is also equals to 1728. Now let's take the Surface area to volume ratio will be 864 to 1728. If you actually take this ratio, you are getting it to be 1 to 2. Now let's look at the answers and we'll find out 
whether we have this type of a ratio. If you look at uh, D, it looks like, uh, sorry, how many it should be? One to two. So uh, D, it shows uh, two to one, but this is not two to one because it's one to two. And uh, B and C are all. So our answer is A because it's 0 0.5 to one. The ratio is A. Next question. 13, which row of the table shows correctly a ceramic material and a polymer? If you can remember, we have discussed about three different types of materials under this earth and atmosphere lesson. So that uh, ceramics, polymers, and the composite material. So under ceramics, we have discussed about glass, pottery, and, pottery and porcelain. Under polymers, we have discussed about polythene, PVC, and rubber, which is a nat natural material. And under Composite materials, we have discussed about MDF, GRP, and reinforced concrete. Those are the three examples for each of those categories. So they, are, they have asked which row of the table shows correctly a ceramic material and a polymer. So if you can remember those lists, you can already see glass is a ceramic and polythene is a polymer. Answer is A. Next question. 14th. Which of the following sound waves has the highest pitch? So when we say highest pitch, pitch is related with frequency. That means within a second, how many waves are generated? So uh, we'll take a better look at all of these waves. So you can see out of these, C is having much more number of waves than all other. So that answer is C. Higher pitch means it's having more number of waves generated per second. Next question, 15th. An atom of aluminium can be represented by the symbol that is given below. How many neutrons are there in the atom of aluminium? So when we are going to attempt this question, we need to remember the first one. This value is the mass number. And also the value that is given down here is called the atomic number. So in order to find out the number of neutrons, you can subtract atomic number by the mass number. So I'll write it here. Mass number minus atomic number. So once we do the calculation here, we have 27 minus 13. Answer is 14. So our answer is B. 16th one. The turning effect of a force is called a moment, which is the correct unit for moment. Now, if you can remember the moment calculation or equation for moment, we have already given here, like force into distance. Now, if I exactly say moment equals force into uh, distance from the pivot, it would be distance from the pivot to the force. So, since it's force multiplied by distance, it would be Newton into meters. Once is C. Next question, 17. The diagram shows uh, the forces acting on a parachutist. Yes, you can see, and we can see the downward force is a bit more than upward force. The words in the box can be used to describe forces. Use words from the box to complete each sentence. Gravity is an example of a flying force. The upward force complete. Um, yeah. This one, uh, we can say gravity is an example of a non-contact force. Then the upward force on the parachute is called the air resistance. Air resistance. Then next one. When the parachute is reached terminal velocity, it is, uh, yeah, they're saying the force is zero, that will be resulting. Resulting force is zero. 
Next question, 18. Tick one box in each row for the table to show the relative charge of each of the particles that are found in an atom. So we know electrons are negatively charged, neutrons are zero, the neutral, protons are plus one. It's the 19th question. Air is a mixture of different gases. If you can remember the percentages, I'll quickly draw the pie chart that we usually uh, discuss in the class. 78% uh, of dry air is nitrogen in two. Then 21% will be oxygen. Then another small proportion will be argon and the rest of will be other gases. So they have uh, given this uh, blank spaces. The greatest proportion of air is nitrogen. Uh, whilst approximately 21% of the air is oxygen. Now in these answers, you have to write the word, especially because they have given these words in the uh, this box also. But even though that they haven't given these type of answers, when you are filling the blanks, where there's a paragraph, make sure you use the words instead of the symbols. Next question. The diagram shows a food chain. In this food chain, we have algae, shrimp, cod, seal, and polar bear. Uh, different terms are applied to organisms in a food chain. Draw one straight line from each term to the name of the organism that is applied to. The first one, we can see uh, they have given primary consumer, producer, and tertiary consumer. We'll quickly mark it. So algae is the producer. The primary consumer is shrimp, then cod. Primary consumer is shrimp. Shrimp. Then cod is not the answer that we want. Tertiary consumer is steel. Next question, polar bears lives in icy, snowy, arctic conditions. State one way that the polar bear is adapted to its habitat. We know that the polar bears are having uh, different colors, different types of fur. So we will say that they have white fur. They have only asked about uh, one way that polar bear is adapted to its habitat. So having thick fur to keep the uh, body heat, we will say like that. White. Uh, uh, the body heat. Next question. The diagram shows the distance time graph for students as they walk between two shops. The student walks at different speeds during different sections of their journey. The shops are 80 meters apart. This question is uh, it's like connecting to one straight line from each speed to its correct value. The average speed for the whole 80 seconds journey between the two shops. So they're talking about the total journey. That means they have taken 80 seconds and they have moved 80 meters. So in order to find out how much speed, we have to use the, uh, the equation speed equals distance over time. So the distance is 80. Time is also 80. So our answer will be 1 meter per second. And down here, the average speed for the whole journey will be 1 meter per second. Next question, the fastest speed of the children walks at. When we look at the graph, we can see the steepest line is given by this section. So we try, we'll try to find out the gradient of that one. So speed equals 60 divided by 20. Answer is 3 meters per second. So the fastest speed will be 3 meters per second. Keep the rule and mark when you're doing. Question number 22. A young child pushes a cart with a forward force of 10 newtons. This is shown in the diagram. 
The card does not move because of friction acting on the card. The card has a mass of 2 kilo. Okay. Pushing it with 10 newtons towards the right hand. So if the card is moving towards the right hand, definitely the friction is acting towards the opposite direction, which is the left hand. And also it should be similar to the value that is applied. <clears throat> because the object is uh, the card doesn't move here they say the card doesn't move so that the forces are balanced so we can mark this is to be 10 newtons resultant force acting on the card is 0 newtons that's why the card is not moving forces are balanced Next question, 23rd one. A student pulse rate when resting is 64 beats per minute. The graph shows what happens to student's pulse rate uh, when they start running. Explain why the student's pulse rate changes as shown in the diagram in the graph. So starting from 64, it increases. So we can simply say the student's pulse rate increases. And but they asked to explain, so we'll have to write a little bit, and also it's a two mark question. So, why is the pulse rate increasing in the right? Yes. These muscles require more oxygen and glucose so that the blood should pump faster. <clears throat> Question number 24, which pair of disease could both be treated effectively with antibiotics? So the antibiotics are used to kill the bacteria. So if there is a disease which is caused by bacteria, then that can be cured with antibiotics. So here we, we will see acid food is caused by uh, fungus, who is caused because of virus, cholera, bacteria, salmonella and bacteria. So our answer is B. Let's look at other ones also. Two caused by virus. Scurvy is a deficiency disease. And malaria caused by protoctis. And recurs once again a uh, deficiency disease. Next question. An acid reacts with metal carbonate. We know that when it reacts with metal carbonate, uh, it gives this type of a reaction. Acid plus metal carbonate will give salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So our answer is D. Next question, 26. The statements describe what might happen when two electrically charged objects are brought closer together. We know that if it is the charged, the same, uh, like we say, the like charges will repel each other. If it is uh, unlike charges, they will get attracted. So here when I go through these sentences, I can see uh, sentence C, the object will attract each other if one object is positive and the other is negative. That is correct. The answer is C. Next question, question number 27. Which of the following gives the correct equation for aerobic respiration? In the aerobic respiration, what happens is the glucose will be used up and it's producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. So when the glucose is used up, oxygen will also be used there. So first of all, glucose should be there and oxygen should be there. Then carbon dioxide and water. All the equations are having the correct products and the reactions except A. So we can remove A for now. Then we will look at the rest of the answers. And you know that these uh, equations should balance. So the only correct balanced equation is C, where we have C6H2O6 plus 6O2 will give 6 carbon dioxide molecules plus 6 water molecules. Next question. A crane is used to lift some bricks. The bricks have a weight of 1500 newtons. The counterweight is used to balance the weight of the bricks. 
So we will do a little bit of a calculation. The diagram shows the position of the bricks and the counterweight. The bricks are in this side, the right hand side. The counterweight is in the left hand side. But where does the counterweight need to uh, balance the weight of the bricks? First of all, we will find out what is the clockwise moment that we have. So a moment. Clockwise moment was 15 into 1500. Do this calculation. We are getting 22,500 meters. Then we will see the anti clockwise moment should be uh, created by using three, 3 meters. So I'm going to divide this side by 3. So give me the answer 7500 newtons. So this is using the principle of moment. Answer is C. Next question. The climber has a weight of 690 newtons. The climb, they climb a cliff that is 10 newton, sorry, 10 meters high. Calculate the work done. Work done equation is also given. Work done equals force into distance moved. And also they have moved upwards, so that's no problem. Like you can do the calculation. Uh, you can substitute work done equals. Force is 690 newtons, that is we moved 10 meters. So our answer will be 6,900 joules, or we can say 1,900 newtons, newton meters. Question. 30th question. Eating a balanced diet is an important part of maintaining good health. Balanced diet must contain some protein. Give two other components of a balanced diet. Now, other than protein, the body requires carbohydrates, fat, vitamins, and minerals. So, we write those carbohydrates, fats. I'll say slash and say vitamin and minerals. Describe the difference between starvation and malnutrition. So starvation uh, is simply not having enough uh, or sufficient food. Starvation is caused by not eating enough, or we can say not eating sufficient enough. Next one is malnutrition. It's simply like uh, not consuming the correct proportions, nutrients. Nutrients. Next question. 31. Iron oxide reacts with carbon to form iron. State type of chemical reaction that iron oxide undergoes as it becomes iron. Now, in this process, we can call it a displacement reaction. And also, since iron oxide is reducing oxygen, we can say this is a reduction also. So, if you have written displacement, that is correct. Or we can say this is a reduction process because iron is removing oxygen atom. Next one, the relative uh, reactivity of metals can be found using displacement reactions between metals and metal oxides. When iron oxide is heated with lead metal, no reaction occurs. When iron oxide is heated with metal X, iron metal is replaced. Describe what, it, what this shows about the reactivity series of the metal, iron, lead, and X. So by looking at this sentence, we need to arrange metal, uh, iron, lead, and X in the order of reactivity. So first of all, we can see iron oxide is heated with metal X, so that iron metal is displaced. That means 
iron uh, metal X is more reactive than iron. So we can say metal X is more reactive than iron. Then we can say uh, the lead couldn't displace iron from iron oxide, so that lead is less reactive than iron. So we can say is the most reactive in iron least reactive lead. Next question. Let me do. Water can diffuse through the walls of root hair cells. The diagram shows a root hair cell and you can see how the water or the water particles are in higher concentration outside. Explain the direction of diffusion of the water molecule the walls of the air cell. We can say uh, since the water molecules are outside more concentrated, it goes from higher concentrated phase to the lower concentrated phase. We'll write the sentence this way. Water molecules will diffuse. into the cell because foundation of water or water molecules higher the cell cell. Or you can say water molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentrated area. It's the inside of the cell. Next question. 33. A student places a flask containing dilute hydrochloric acid on a balance. The reading on the balance is 156 grams. The student adds 5 grams of magnesium. Uh, to the acid in the flask and a chemical reaction takes place. The reaction produces a gas. Consider the chemical equation for the reaction that takes place. Now here also you can see a metal is reacting with um, acid. So that means it's producing hydrogen gas. And also since it's gas, we wrote, uh, we write it is H2. And when we balance it, here it should be Next one, when the reaction stops, the reading on the balance is 160.78 grams. Therefore, the mass of the gas that is produced during this reaction. So they have given the uh, mass of reactant. So we we'll write down mass of reactant 156.78. Five point zero zero. That means our answer is one point ten. Then we know, according to conservation of mass, the same mass should be found in the product as product as well. But here we know that there's a gas produced, so that the amount which is missing from the container should be the mass of gas. So we'll do a quick calculation. Uh, we have one hundred sixty one point zero zero. In the reactant side, so that the product side will find out the difference. Okay, the answer will be 0.22 grams. Next question. That's the end of section A. Section B. When dilute hydrochloric acid added to sodium thiosulfate solution, the chemical reaction takes place and the solution becomes cloudy. 
student investigates how the temperature of the acid affects the rate of reaction, the diagram shows the method the student uses. You can see a dilute hydrochloric acid is added to the sodium thiosulfate solution, and at the bottom, you can see there's a cross drawn on a paper. The student starts a, a stop clock when the dilute acid is added and stops it when the solution is so cloudy that the cross on the paper can no longer be seen. The student repeats the experiment using dilute hydrochloric acid at different temperatures. 25 cubic centimeter of dilute hydrochloric acid and 25 cubic centimeter of sodium thiosulfate solution are used each time. Name the piece of equipment that the student should use to measure the volume of the dilute hydrochloric acid that will be the measuring cylinder. Now, other than the measuring cylinder, you can use a pipette or a butyrate also. Next one, this symbol is uh, on the bottle of dilute hydrochloric acid. Give the name of this symbol. This is usually, we say, irritant or harmful and also can be called hazard. Irritant, hazard, or you can say harmful. Next one. State one safety precaution the student should take when doing this investigation. So we know that we are using acid, so we have to use the safety goggles or safety uh, glasses, we can say. Next question. Complete the table by placing a tick in the correct column beside each variable to identify it uh, as a either a central variable, dependent variable, or an independent variable. First one is done. So they have said concentration of sodium thiosulfate solution should be a central variable. Volume of hydrochloric acid and sodium thiosulfate that should be a also a control variable. Temperature of dilute hydrochloric acid should be changed. That is our independent variable. So depending on that, the time taken for the cross to uh, be invisible will change. So that will be the dependent variable. Next question. We have given a graph. The student uses the results to produce this graph. Uh, uh, one of the results are anomalous, circle anomalous results. When you see here, you can see the point which is at 40 degrees Celsius, it's anomaly. So mark it, draw a curve of best fit to complete the graph. So we can draw the curve. There are these points like that. Question. A student has two different rubber bands, A and B. You can see B is smaller and thinner. We have uh, done a small experiment. You can see there's the meter ruler, pointer, rubber band, A. Uh, is applied. The table shows students results. Complete the table by calculating the stretch of rubber band B with one feet added. So they have given data here. Um, and also position of the pointer is given. Stretch in centimeters. Um, 2.5. Position of the new pointer is given. 63. So if you find the difference between the Position of pointer initially it is 65, so 65 minus 63, the answer will be 2 centimeters. So it will be next one. They start the path shown by the results for rubber band A. You can see as the number of weight increases in that graph. Uh, when the number of weight increases, the position of the pointer goes down. That we can write down that as the number of weight increases. The pointer position 
the rating decreases. Next question. Before doing the investigation, the student makes this prediction. As each weight is added, rubber band B will stretch more than rubber band A. Explain whether the result supports student's prediction. Now, when we look at this reading, uh, rubber band A is actually having uh, the stretch until 15. No, it has stretched until uh, 15, but uh, rubber band B is having 18. But initially, you can see at the beginning, the stretch is a bit less if compared to rubber band A. So we can write. So be a little bit more detailed answer and also it's the same after question. So we can see uh, initially rubber band A stretch more than rubber band B. Second thing we can say, uh, with 5 to 6 weight, rubber band B does not have the greater stretch. This has a greater Then we can say when more than three weights are added, B stretches more than A for each added weight. Next question. A student wants to investigate the following question. How does light intensity or brightness affect the rate of photosynthesis in a piece of pond bead? They have shown a bulb and also the uh, pond bead given in test tube and a meter roller. Investigation is done in a darkened room. Predict what might happen when the voltage is increased, making the bulb brighter. We know that the rate of photosynthesis or the number of bubbles produced per minute will increase. We can say number of bubbles produced per minute will increase. This is a symbol for voltmeter. Add a voltmeter to the uh, circuit diagram to show how the voltage across the bulb would be measured. So we know that the voltmeter should be connected parallel in the circuit. Look at this question. The table shows students' results. The voltage across the bulb changes this way, and they have given some another table. I mean, another column, complete the table by adding the heading for the second column. Actually, it should be number of bubbles per minute. Okay. 
question. Describe one way of an intro they obtain valid result. Uh, we usually do this experiment um, while keeping, I mean, while keeping some things controlled. So in this case, what we can do is keep the distance uh, controlled. We can keep the temperature controlled. Talk about those four. I'll first try to keep the distance constant. Now when I say distance, it should be the uh, the lamp and the phone weed, the distance in between the in between phone and phone weed. Second one you can think about temperature. This should be constant. Actually, they are only asking one answer but i have given two here said what the student should do to obtain reliable results this is a very famous question actually what you have to do is repeat and find out the average repeat the investigation And average. Next one, state a further question that could be tested scientifically using the apparatus in the diagram. So that means when you think a little bit more, how can you improve this research a little bit? It will be the last question in this paper. So we can uh, think about like when the distance is changed, what would happen? Or like this can a uh, little vary, like uh, depending on your creativity, you can give a very good answer for this. So I would say that uh, how the rate of photosynthesis varies with the distance we can check, or we can say that the color of the lamp will depend on the rate of photosynthesis. Okay, I'll write the question this way. How does the rate of photosynthesis vary with the distance between the lamp and the pond? Weed? So you can think about the color of the lamp. The same thing, how does the rate of photosynthesis vary with the color of the lamp like that okay that's all then thank you so much